Yo, what is going on YouTube? It's Dub Pace here, and this is my SM Arm One Pull Beginner's Guide for Mage Power Leveling. Today's guide is split into two different sections. The first section, we're going to play through a recent one pull that I did in SM Arm. And through the run, I'll be providing play-by-play -play commentary so that you can know my full thought process and everything that goes into making a successful pull. In the second section of this video, I'm going to cover a variety of different situations that can lead you to wipe during one of these runs. Hopefully, I can provide a little bit of context so that you have a bit of a more informed perspective when you begin learning this on your own, so that the learning curve isn't quite as steep. As always, timestamps to each individual section will be listed in the description below, as well as the talent spec that I'm using for this run and the gear that I was wearing as well. Let's jump right in. All right. After you killed the first two mobs, then it is time to actually begin the run. You're going to see here that it's actually not important to cast Ice Barrier or anything, but I will make a note to always grab the Fade Leaf if you're an herbalist. I do personally always reserve the herbs when I'm doing SM Cath Arm 1 pulls and selling them. And... Keep in mind that right now, your number one priority is to avoid aggroing anything until you're ready to pull the final mobs, which are right next to the boss doorway. So in particular, it's important to pay attention to the patrols. The evoker patrol, this one in particular, it turns around right after it reaches the stairway. And you can use the inside of the candlestick to easily avoid this mob. Coming up next is a very important blink timing. It helps me to visualize where I'm going to be blinking through. And if you don't blink, you will accidentally aggro. But that's the only section that you need to blink through as you're getting to the final stage. This is the final hallway. And make sure you have recast mana shield and ice barrier. And make sure you have 100% mana before you pull. If there is a patrol in the hallway, you can dip into the window. I always pull with rank 1 Frostbolt. These mobs will aggro everything along the way. And this corner mob I always pull with a rank 1 Fire Blast. Now we're off. Rank 1 Arcane Explosion to aggro everything that you see. I will use rank 1 Fire Blast here and there to create a little bit of distance between me and some of the packs. Frost Nova Timing, right there. Now Blink, Ice Barrier. And you're not going to recast Ice Barrier now until right before you Ice Block at the end of the pull. Very, very important. Rank 1 Arcane Explosion. Rank 1 Arcane Explosion. On this triple pack, I like to use Rank 1 Fire Blast, but I missed it there. On this far pack, use Counter Spell. And then, boom, Frost Nova Timing again. There's different ways to do this, but here I turn to the right. Jump on the inside of the corner. Perfect. And use rank 1 arcane explosion to pull. Remember, do not recast ice barrier. It's very important. Use your mana ruby and your robe of the archmage when you can. And really important blink timing right there. Don't let the mobs catch up to you. Don't take too much damage. Now recast mana shield, recast ice barrier, and ice block. Perfect. Now I'm going to use a Ice Block Cancel Aura into Rank 1 Frost Nova Macro here to get out safely while also jumping. I get out and we do have a loose mob. I always cheap a loose mob right away, especially if it's a defender, and immediately start with full rank Blizzard. I'm going to place my cursor of the Blizzard. The middle of the Blizzard is always on the frontmost mob. And I let the Blizzard go usually about halfway to two-thirds of the cast before I move back even further and cast again. We get three Blizzards off, and then we're going to blink at a 90-degree angle to all the mobs. Frost Nova into Flame Strike, into Cone of Cold, into Arcane Explosion, spam. It's important to get in there if the mobs are low health and... That's pretty much the run. Keep in mind, this was a nearly perfect run for me, uh, other than missing those three mobs because I accidentally fire blasted the wrong enemy. So 
if you are buying runs, you should be making sure that you get about 69 kills per run. Otherwise, the person carrying you is not pulling everything. That looked very simple, but let's take a look at some scenarios where things go wrong and what we can do to try to help ourselves when things start to go terribly. And just in case, if you are really, really struggling, you can use a limited invulnerability potion to make this so easy. Just do the whole run normal, ice block in the same place, do everything the same as explained before, but coming out of ice block, spam your limited invulnerability potion and spam two arcane explosions into a cone of cold and then frost nova and then do everything the same. That little bit of extra damage makes this so much easier. You'll see that the mechanics don't matter nearly as much. You don't need to worry about anything. But using that lip coming out of ice block, if you're struggling, this is a way that you can do it perfectly every time. Everything is normal except for the way that you get out of ice block. Essentially, you can skip doing one extra blizzard if you use this technique. But you need to use that limited invulnerability potion every time. And look how easy that was. It's just simple everything dies so quickly and there's no problems at all nearly full health nearly half of my mana pool is still full this is the way to do it if you're struggling now let's take a look at a situation where i didn't do enough damage with my blizzard and the mobs end up being just a little bit too high of health as i come out of the ice block it is extraordinarily important to recast Mana Shield and cast Fire Ward to prevent any interruption to your Blizzard. But you'll see something kind of weird happens here. I start my Blizzard and some of the mobs in the back get loose and they sort of run up. Nothing is really grouped tightly. And because of the Myrmidon being so far up here, I'm not able to get three Blizzards in. It's only two. So I do my normal thing. I blink at a perpendicular angle. I do Flame Strike into Kona Cold. And stuff just isn't really that low of health. You do see some... Uh, Enemies are starting to run away. If you see enemies running away, you need to prioritize uh, strafing over to those enemies while you continue to AoE down the higher life enemies as well. Because if the enemies that are running away, eventually they reach a point where they're like, why am I running? That guy is screwed. And he come, they all come back at the same time and clap you. So it is important if I go back really quick here. So we went back and watch how when I see enemies running away, I start to do the arcane explosion in a big circle. I see stuff running over towards the edge and I run towards those mobs. This can actually prevent a wipe, believe it or not. Even though it sounds super obvious, I have wiped so many times by not focusing those low health mobs first and then dealing with the higher health mobs later. I hope that helps. We are hopping into slow motion here because this timing when all of the mobs catch up to you in the corner, when you blink is super important. If you don't blink in time, you can lose all your mana to mana shield just getting beat up. And you can also just straight up die because you lost too much health. So be really careful with that timing. Pay really close attention to all the mobs as you get to that point. So when you're running to the boss room in the very beginning, it can be easy to accidentally aggro. If you do only aggro one mob, you lucked out. Just kill that one mob and then keep going with your run. Don't try to just keep running. Don't cheap it. Don't do anything like that. Kill the mob. Keep going. I accidentally aggroed this defender and I just wanted to share my favorite response to deal with this. If you're close enough, I just book it as fast as I can to the boss door and I pull with counter spell and I will use rank one cone of cold to try to create some distance with the mobs that have grouped up around me. During this time it is super important to be very protective of your health and your mana pool because if you lose too much of either of those resources then you will not be able to successfully get out of ice block and get the kill here. Just resume the normal run as fast as you can. Don't panic. All right, this is an extremely dire situation where I make a ton of mistakes, but still save the run. 
I come out of Ice Block, I Frost Nova, two mobs are loose, one is a melee guy, I sheep the melee guy, and then my blizzard placement is bad. The mobs in the back run through, and then they rubber band, and then the same thing happens again. I'm placing blizzard too far up, and then the mobs in the back run through, and they rubber band. Everything's too close to me, I pop a lip. Two Arcane Explosions into Kona Cold into I, uh, Frost Nova, and then Flame Strike. And then next is a cheeky trick that was given to me by my homie Nico, who told me that you can use Cold Snap, Frost Nova, into Kona Cold to get some extra damage in a bad situation. And then I use this to actually save this run. Believe it or not, the Shaman comes in and heals me just a little bit, and we get saved and didn't wipe this run. So you can save the run using those tricks. And that about wraps up the video. Now you know what a perfect run looks like. You know how you can use a limited invulnerability potion to uh, make this run very easy if you're struggling. And you know many of the common pitfalls that uh, myself and others run into when trying to successfully complete a SM arm one pull. If you haven't checked out my SM Cath video, I will link that at the end of this. And uh, I'd like to thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you haven't done so already. And of course, if you have any questions, leave me a comment below and I'll try to respond to all of them. Otherwise, catch me on my stream or any of my social media that is listed in the description. Thanks for watching Dub Club and I'll catch you next time.